so it is now sunday i haven't spoken to this vlog all week i've taken a few little bits of b-roll but i have a lot to catch you up on i have five minutes until i need to go and sort the air fryer so i'll ram off five minutes and i might stop and come back however right okay where do i start from this week i'm sure you can tell that i've got a cold I always think that being normal person sick on top of chronically ill sick, sick is totally unfair, but the universe does not like me at the moment. Um, I've obviously put out some bad karma into the world. I went to work on Wednesday, even though I was feeling a bit rubbish and thought if I can just get through my shifts this week, this week and next week, then I've got a week off. Um, but the universe had other plans. So on Thursday, but one of my cats was hit by a car and he's fine well he's not fine but he's alive let's put it that way for now I'll explain in a second if you've seen my Instagram you will have seen all this but we were so grateful that this these two girls and this man just walked up the drive and were like do you know anyone around here that's got a black and white cat and I was like me he's like oh she was like I'm, I'm so sorry I've just hit him and he's run off so straight away we're like okay that's a good sign if he's run off that means that he is alive so started looking for him i was knocking on my neighbor's doors nobody was in so if any of my neighbors have got kind of cctv or ring cams they will see me like crawling around their gardens the way that the houses are around here i wasn't kind of like breaking into anybody's gardens they are quite open so looking for bert and then uh, uh, also at this point this was like two hours before I was supposed to be at work so frantically rang my boss and left this voice note which I'm sure I don't know if I made any sense in it but that was that I then we found him so we've got like a lean to at the side of the house and a fence and he'd like wedged himself in it so then I had to coax him out and I genuinely thought I said to Tom like I'm gonna get scratched to pieces here because this is gonna be painful for him but I just need to get him out and get him to the vet and actually bless him we had to use like a broom to kind of pull him a bit closer to us so i could reach in and grab him and he was such so so good put him in his carry case this is going to be tmi but you know i have ibs the adrenaline i was like i just need to go to the toilet before we go to the vets so i'm in the toilet heard tom shout at me ran back in and he'd escaped from his cage and was walking around the living room like dragging his back leg so managed to get him to our vet our vets were lovely saw him straight away he was breathing a bit weirdly um so they took him straight off me took him and put him in an oxygen tent to give him some oxygen and obviously at that point in time we didn't know how it was going to go so left him at our vets tom had, tom dropped me and him at the vets then came back for nana if anybody doesn't care or like doesn't care that's not what i'm saying if if you don't have experience of caring for someone with alzheimer's as well it just adds an extra layer of like logistics to everything so our vets is about only about 15 minutes away so we made sure nana had been to the toilet and was settled with a cup of tea tom then took me and dropped me at the vets and then came back for nana i stayed there saw the vet with I keep going to say Dodger. Dodger's my like old cat from years ago, but yeah, stayed with Bertie, got a plan together, and then I got a taxi home. So yeah, the vet said, well, we're going to monitor him. We're going to do some scans and things and see what we can do. Um, when they rang us, they said that he's an absolute trooper, that they didn't want to sedate him for any scans because at this point they didn't know if he'd got a head injury and with his breathing not being very good they didn't want to put him under any sedation so they managed to do an x-ray without sedation and apparently he just lay there and let them do it he was really good he'd had some really strong painkillers at this point i'm sure anybody would want that after being hit by a car after that they said that they wanted to transfer him to a specialist hospital kind of ran through fees and things and you know thank goodness Bert is insured if you take anything from this rather long rambly story please get your pets insured if they're not so they the plan was so we had to take him to the hospital the hospital is about 25 minutes away so an hour round trip so we sorted one of our friends to come and sit with Nana I'm just gonna go and deal with the air fryer and I'll be back. So yeah, so we then picked him up from our vets and took him over to the hospital. 
we have insurance as i think i already mentioned but be warned the insurance that we're with doesn't do direct payments so we have had to pay um i think so far we're looking at about 1800 pound that we're in a good position that's come out of our savings but it's a lot of money um at both vets they talked to us about um like ceilings of treatments and what we could afford and things like that they were really good with that um so we knew as well that our um insurance would cover up to five thousand pound so we said you know that's not the absolute ceiling we then said that we could put a couple more on top of that which i'm just so glad that um i'm back working and i've been able to save for the past few months because it's not we're not that well off that, that money is just sat there all this money has a purpose we have little pots for emergencies and things but yeah it wasn't a decision we took lightly because obviously in my heart i wanted to be like yeah whatever whatever it takes get my boy back but we also said to them at the time as well like i didn't want to try and be a hero i wanted him to be comfy as well um so yeah he went over to the specialist hospital and was seen by the neurology surgeon there that was on friday saturday morning that was only yesterday it's yesterday saturday it feels like a very long week Yesterday morning, I got a call about eight o'clock from the vet, Sergio, who is the head of neuro there, who was taking over Bert's case. And he asked if we could come in and talk in person. So me and Tom had a very nice 30 minute journey where we were both just in tears because we presumed that he wanted to speak to us in person to tell us that, you know, it was really bad and he couldn't do anything but actually it was more that he wanted to talk through pricing and get consent forms signed etc so we consented for Bert to have a CT scan and if it was seen as necessary also an MRI scan knowing that our insurance would only cover the first £1,500 of that and it could go up to three, four thousand. 4000 it makes me feel a little bit sick talking about all this money but this is the reality of what we've been going through um and so that was in the morning yesterday we signed the consent forms and came home uh the vet no this must have been friday sorry yeah this was friday because i wasn't at work so we were told that he would update us at some point during the day um and that no news is good news if there was anything kind of going south we'd get a call straight away so the longer it took for us to hear from him obviously the better so Bert had the scan and the good news was that he had no skull fractures no head injury he's got a swollen eye at the moment which one of the things that they'd said is to prepare ourselves that he might lose that eye but they did find on this scan that he there's obviously the eye injury and he has a fracture on his pelvis. So he was then discussed with the ophthalmology vet and the orthopedic vet. Ophthalmology had said that he wasn't showing any signs of being able to see out that eye, um, but they were gonna put him on eye drops over the weekend and see how he gets on. And the orthopaedic surgeon said that he didn't think it was a surgical case, that these fractures with strict cage rest can heal themselves. So his thought at the state of play on Friday night was just to monitor him over the weekend. All his vital signs were looking good and we'd see how we were. So both yesterday and today, we've had an update from the vet in the morning. Again, not much they can tell us. He is showing signs that he's got vision in his eye um, and the swelling has gone down a lot from the eye drops. He's on pain medication. Yesterday morning, they said that he hadn't eaten yet, but that wasn't to be, that wasn't too unexpected. But this morning they didn't mention anything about his eating so i'm presuming that means that he's eating well so the plan at the moment is that tomorrow morning he will be assessed again by orthopedic and ophthalmology and neuro and hopefully if he continues and it's all looking positive he will be coming home to us 
for six weeks of cage rest. So on top of the vet's fees, we've had to go out and buy a cage to keep him in. We've had to get a big dog crate, but it is looking positive at the moment. Um, so that's the update that I've got on Bert. Like I say, I'm kind of updating people over on Instagram as and when I know anything. I, we're not fully out of the woods yet, but we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm just gonna go and finish doing our food and then I will come and talk to you about the book news that I've got this week because we need to finish this on a high. I mean, it's a high that Bertie is, fingers crossed, gonna be okay. But yeah, I will definitely be keeping these vlogs updated with his progress. But yeah, um, I will be back to talk books, shopping and a food intolerance test in just a moment. So <laughs> it's a couple of hours later now. I have had something to eat, got a coffee and despite wearing a black top, I've just had a big, big snuggle from Ernie. Ernie and Bert have never been apart before, so... Ernie's a bit lost without him. He's been meowing around the house looking for him. So we're just trying to give him a little bit of TLC as well. That's the one good thing about having three adults here. When Bertie's back, I'm going to be taking over as his chief nurse. And then Ernie will just be taken over by Nana for lots of fuss. He's currently sat on Nana's lap at the moment, fast asleep. So in book news this week, I feel like I should like have some like intro here like I feel like <laughs> I'm a news reporter I've said that before about my desk but Jacqueline Wilson has said that she oh my neighbor's just there hi neighbor <laughs> Jacqueline Wilson announced this week that more than like I think she said it's like 30 years on can't be quite that long about 20 years on she is going to be releasing an adult book which I think is the first adult book she's written following Ellie, Nadine and Magda from the Girls Trilogy and straight away I went on to Waterstones and pre-ordered it because I was just like oh my god these books are my life like Jacqueline Wilson Jacqueline Wilson and Lucy Daniels are the two authors that really like got me into reading and got me to be a reader oh and Anne M. Martin with the Babysitters Club but Honestly, I, I'm having mixed views. Like I've I've pre-ordered it. I used my Waterstones. I'd got ten pounds worth of points, so I've pre-ordered the all singing, all dancing special edition. And I got out my. So this one is my original copy of Girls in Tears, and it's signed. And I also a few years ago treat myself to the hardbacks of the Girls series. So. Obviously, like I say, gut reaction was, oh my God, I need to know this story. Two things have kind of come up since then that have made me a little bit like I'm a bit unsure. So firstly, like somebody said, Girls Under Pressure definitely contributed to my issues with eating. But I'm really, it's hard to know whether it gave me comfort because it was a teenager going through the same things as I was or whether it was the other way round that had I not read that had I read a story of a girl who was plus size and proud of it would I have gone differently I don't know and another criticism that's been brought up is that apparently I haven't read the blurb on this I was just like I need it apparently it says in the blurb about Elle being a mom, and I hope that the whole story isn't focused on that but we know I'm going to read it I am 100% going to read it and that comes out in September so August July June May so in May June July and August I'm going to reread the girls books I say that I might actually just do it in one week read the whole thing and vlog it so let me know what you'd prefer with that maybe even I could run a kind of week-long Jacqueline Wilson girls a thon or something let me know what you think about that so I did finish one book this week and that was 10 things my cat hates about you by Lottie Lucas I picked this up in cancer research I think it was about 50p a little while back um and I was disappointed well 
I don't know, I think I've given it a two and a half star. In the words of Aoife, it was a book and I read it. I didn't like the love triangle in this. I didn't like the really stereotypical way of it. I did like the way that our main character was a woman that worked in the in the kind of art slash science field of museums but that could have been explored more i didn't think there was any need for the love triangle and obviously with a name like 10 things my cat hates about you and it says you know when clara's ginger cat casper chases yet another romantic prospect out the door she's ready to give up on love altogether i thought the cat was going to be a bigger character in this and this book has really i mean it wasn't a bad book by any means the romance was very fade to black from what I can remember which is fine but if these the if there's not going to be any sex scenes in it if it's going to be a kind of fade to black romance I want more community like with Heidi Swain's books I want more side characters and things like that whereas this didn't really have that so yeah not an author that I think I'd pick up from again not a bad book by any means if you just want something quite romantic and light-hearted great but wasn't up there i think especially when you read as many books as i do to to really like stand out it's got to be really really good and this was just middle of the road i'm putting that there because i am going to be bringing back my book balance series you heard it here first i then have a very interesting parcel come so i have ordered this was because Kaylee from Bookworm Escapes mentioned it on Instagram and it's something that I'd been um in and ah in over for a while. Conflicted on the science of it, I have read some great reviews, some bad reviews, thought I'd give it a try for myself. Now, let me point this out by saying I used some money for my savings for this and had I had everything happen with Bert before I'd done that, wouldn't have done it. But anyway, I have bought the york test premium food intolerance test so she was recommended it by one of her medical team kaylee has endometriosis i'm sure she doesn't mind me saying that she talks about it openly on her instagram i'll leave her instagram below and somebody in her team had said you know it, it's something to look into whether obviously with endometriosis it's an inflammatory disease whether there could be things like that making it worse like obviously not saying that obviously if i take this and i do have some intolerances that it's going to cure all my health problems but i'm in the stage now where i'll try anything to just bring the day-to-day -day symptoms down a little bit i will be doing that next week i want to get over this cold first i don't know if it has any bearing on the test results but i just feel like i want to be <laughs> i was gonna say full health but as full health as i get before doing that and then yesterday when we were up at the shopping centre we needed to go to pets at home because we needed to get a crate for Bert some treats some extra blankets and things like that because we don't know at the moment whether he's going to be having accidents or not so I wanted to make sure I'd got plenty of blankets and towels and things so I'd got plenty to have in his cage and some to wash etc I obviously popped into a couple of charity shops I was really good there was a pair of orange trousers that I cannot stop thinking about. So we've had to order some of his stuff to collect in the store. So we'll be going tomorrow to get that. If these trousers are still there, pretty sure I'll be coming home with them. But I did pick up two books. And again, I make no qualms about it that I was meant to be on a no spend year. I am going to be obviously <laughs> trying to recoup a lot of the money that we've spent on Bert this week. But... The fact that I only spent £2.50 on two books and did it make me happy? Yes. It's been a few months. So anyway, I picked up Rabbits for Food by Binny Kirschenbaum. Now, I don't know if I've heard about this one before. I think I saw this because I saw the cover and thought it was Bunny by, is it Mona Awad? But I've read a little bit of this so far and it seems to really fit into the weird books that I probably like but 99% of the world probably wouldn't but I'm gonna give that a go a few bits of language so far that I'm not sure on but 
it's early days. I've barely done any reading this week, as you can probably imagine. And then the second one that I bought, I thought this was much newer because it seemed to have been everywhere last Christmas. And that's Dying for Christmas by Tammy Cohen. I think maybe it was just everywhere because it was in the works last year. But I know I'm not supposed to be buying any Christmas books, but I most of my Christmas collection are fluffy romances. So I needed a few Christmas kind of crime thrillers to break that up a bit let's pick that up so yeah book balance is going to be fun I am going to go now I'm at work again this afternoon and in between all of that I am just sleeping and resting and trying to get myself to feel a bit more human so thank you if you've watched this ramble I have been loving your reactions to the vlogs obviously I will be vlogging Bert's recovery and things and hopefully <laughs> Next week, I'll actually have a bit more reading update to you. I may have actually done some reading. But yeah, until next time, look after yourselves. Oh, and if you want more kind of day-to-day -day updates on things, then check out my Instagram. I'll leave that link below. And yeah, until next time, look after yourselves. Bye. Yeah.